The 49ers have landed in Minnesota, who's a three plus hour flight in Minneapolis. They're going to practice on Wednesday and Thursday. So players day off for ers probably have to go through some treatment though. And they need to recover from the flight because we got a lot of muscle strains, a lot of little injuries and some bigger ones on this roster. Most notably Jimmy Ward. That's what I want to talk about today. What's the fill in plan for Jimmy Ward. Let's open up Matt Barrow's article from today. I have to share the screen because uh, there's a lot going on in 49ers land as far as needing to get some replacement players ready because they are, I want to, I don't want to say dropping like flies, but boy, the, the injuries are mounting for the 49ers at this point. And the significant part about Jimmy Ward's injury is that it threatens his availability for the season opener on September 11th. We asked Kyle Shanahan this morning, when he said that it's a serious or significant hamstring strain, we asked, well, is September 11th a question mark for Jimmy Ward? And he said, yes, it very much is a question mark. So some of the Twitter doctors said that this is something between four and eight weeks for Jimmy Ward. And if you look at the calendar right now, it's August 15th. 49ers play on September 11th against the Bears. So a month, roughly four weeks. You can tell how it's going to get a little bit hairy. And remember, this is a marathon and not a sprint. So I don't think that the 49ers are going to be rushing Jimmy Ward back anytime soon because they have 17 games to play, and that's just in the regular season. So you don't want a hamstring, which can nag, which can sit around there for a while, which can linger, right? You don't want that to linger in this long season if uh, it, if not playing Jimmy Ward in week one means that you can actually take care of that and not have it return. So I would actually at this moment, and we're still a little bit away, right? At this moment, I would say that it's less likely that Jimmy Ward plays week one than it is that he does play in week one. So we will see what happens with all of this. Anyway, this is Matt Barrow's article. It's up on The Athletic. I'm going to go ahead and put that link into the chat section for you. He had our recap today. Big shakeups in the secondary and Debo Samuel heating up. Debo Samuel, did I put him down here? I don't think I have. Right here, Trey Lance and the 49ers' new star targets are finding their chemistry. Uh, Trey, I, I said this in the post practice video. We had Trey connect with Debo three times during team drills. We had Trey connect with George Kittle. We had Kyle Juszczyk catch a pass out of the slot. The bigger names were making plays for the 49ers, and I did think that was significant because we've been waiting for Trey Lance to develop real, real rapport with somebody not named Brandon Ayuk, and that did indeed happen for the 49ers on this practice on Monday morning. Trey, as time goes along, I feel that you know there are two delineate. There's a two big delineations in his practice performance and I'm charting some of the, the completion percentage. These aren't advanced stats by any stretch of the imagination, but I think, you know, with something like raw completion percentage, when there's a big enough disparity, you can tell that there's something going on. And it's really funny because when you look at padded practices versus non-padded practices and the non-padded ones obviously came first, Trey Lance's completion percentage has been way better, like 20 points better in the padded practices versus the non-padded practices. So the 49ers offensive line having a chance to protect itself has indeed been a big deal. And then you also look at the split for Trey Lance between the team scripted portions of practice and the actual move the ball portion of practice, which is where Kyle Shanahan just lets the offense play and treats it like a game, right? The scripted portions, he's actually working on specific stuff with Trey Lance and they come out with the plays way ahead of time. They're not calling based on down and distance. Well, Trey has been way better completion percentage wise in the move the ball portion, which more closely resembles real football. He's like 64 to 65% there versus the scripted portion where he's only 47%. So to me, I think that's some evidence that Kyle Shanahan is trying things out during the scripted portion, that he's not necessarily calling what's going to work at any particular time. He's trying to train Trey Lance during the scripted portion. And then, you know, when the training wheels come off during the move the ball period, he's obviously going to call plays to try to move the chains and try to do good stuff on the, it, it, within the context of real football. And Trey is actually playing better in those regards. So he it, within that context today, he did connect with some of the 49ers Star players with Debo Samuel, with George Kittle, with Kyle Juszczyk. That was all in move the ball action for the 49ers. So I thought that was a big deal. 
All right, so the 49ers made a couple of roster moves. Let's talk about these. First, Dark was Denard released by the 49ers. Why did the 49ers release him today? This was a surprise to a lot of people, myself included. I thought they'd, you know, I, I said the time for Samuel Womack was coming sooner rather than later. That's what I was talking about as far as Samuel Womack. I, I didn't think that the time for Samuel Womack and Samuel Womack alone at the nickelback spot was right now. Now, Diometer Lenore might get some run at the nickelback spot now that uh, Denard's not on the team anymore. They've been running Lenore on the inside, and Lenore has a skill set that I think can fit that nickel spot that can, you know, he's physical, he's feisty. He's obviously not the Fort Anders tallest cornerback, just like Samuel Womack, who's 5'9". So maybe Lenore will give Womack a little bit more of a push now that Denard is not a, is not a way on. But, you know, I talked about this a lot. Dark was Denard was the starter throughout the offseason. He was the starter to begin training camp, and the 49ers really trusted him as far as his playbook knowledge, and they liked the fact that he helped bring the youngsters along. They liked the fact that he was there mentoring Samuel Womack. So credit to Dark was Denard for, you know, he fell in love with football again. He tweeted that after he joined the 49ers in Week 18 last year, helped them beat the Rams. Then he said that in the offseason, re-signed with the 49ers for all that. But... Uh, it's a situation where the 49ers saw so much good stuff from Samuel Womack this past weekend that they just decided to say hell with it. We're going to run with this. This is Womack's job. Maybe they give Dion Mador Lenore some run at that nickel spot as well, but they don't need the veteran anymore. And they have to cut down, by the way, from 85, from 90 to 85 by tomorrow, by Tuesday. So they're currently at 86 because they also waived Josh Hokett the fullback who's been with them for two years on the practice squad. Why'd they do that now? Well, I suspect that because not that many teams use fullbacks, I think that the 49ers want some competition around the roster. They want to make sure that they have as many opportunities to evaluate the guys they aren't as familiar with. I think that they are familiar with uh, Josh Hokett, and they're rolling a dice here. If Hokett doesn't get claimed on waivers, then the 49ers will be able to re-sign him to their practice squad come August 30th or September 1st when practice squads are fair game to create. And then he could be that backup behind Kyle Juszczyk. But for now, the 49ers do not have a backup fullback. No Josh Hokett as they have to cut from 86 to 85. So this is uh, it's going to be fascinating stuff moving forward. We're going to see what the 49ers can do uh, with – an 85-man roster, and then with an 80-man roster next week, and then obviously the cut down to 53 happens the week after that. Anyway, today's uh, update, just a quick one. I wanted to go through some of the big stuff that happened today for the 49ers. We'll talk to you all tomorrow. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. 49ers in Minnesota now. They will practice on Wednesday and Thursday. And those are going to be big deals for Trey Lance. All right. And everybody else because they're thin on those defensive backs against what, what is a very talented Minnesota uh, wide receiver core. Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, maybe Kirk Cousins will all be waiting. All right. Everybody take care. Thanks for joining.